Camino Portuguese Lessons, lesson number five, managing small problems before they become big ones. In case you're not aware, I do have other Camino Portuguese lessons, so I'll link those below. And the video immediately before this, lesson number four, was about listening to my body. And in that video, I mentioned two specific nerve issues I have that I did my best and I feel successfully managed during my Camino Portuguese. So if you haven't watched that, check that one out because two of those I consider, well, those two nervous nerve issues, I consider them relatively small problems. However, I did various things during my Camino Portuguese to manage them so they did not become big ones. And I didn't take any pain meds or acetaminophen to manage pain at all. I really chose to listen to my body in terms of pain and to not mask the pain in any way. Totally different issue I had during my Camino Portuguese is on the first four or five days, it was gorgeous weather. And I was hiking in my sandals a lot without socks. And I know at home when I do that a lot in the summer, what sometimes happens is I'll get cracked heels in with my skin. And I think it was about day five or six I had a tiny piece of cracked skin on one of my heels. It was, it was not bleeding. It was not painful, and um, I didn't have. It, it didn't fully crack. So what I chose to do then and there is I went into a, a pharmacy here. I got some antibiotic ointment, similar to polysporin, I'm guessing. I got some band aids, and then twice a day, every morning and every evening. I put the ointment, I rubbed it in, put more on top, and then put a band-aid on top. And essentially, even right now, the day after my Camino Portuguese finished, that small cracked heel line did not crack, I did not have pain, it did not bleed at any time. So I'm really grateful for that because if any of you have ever had a cracked heel before, you know that every step you take you get a tiny wince of pain depending on how severe the cracked heel is and i thought oh man i do not want that for the remaining 400 kilometers of my camino portuguese so i'm really grateful that i managed that small problem and it did not become a big one another example is there's a few times i'd be hiking along and i'd be thinking wow i feel a little dehydrated or I haven't taken a drinker in a while or I haven't urinated in a while. So more often than not, what I would do is I would start drinking or if I was near a grocery store, I'd go and buy like some orange juice and I just drink a bunch of water. And that was always a, again, that's a minor problem, but I did see different people on the Camino that had issues with headaches. There was one person I met that felt really sick the following morning and I don't know for sure, but my gut feeling with that person is that they were dehydrated because I had hiked with them the day before. And yeah, they had some water, but I didn't see them have anything with electrolytes in it. And um, it was very hot that day. It was close to 30 Celsius. So again, it could have been other things, but I, I feel that person was dehydrated. So I feel I managed that as a small problem before it became a big one. I, I never had a big headache from dehydration during this whole Camino Portuguese. And, you know, I was thinking there's various things in my life at home that are small problems and then become big ones. A big one for me is cleaning. And it sounds very simple, but I don't always put things away after using them. And things tend to build up and build up. And then all of a sudden my bedroom is like chaos and it takes me like forever to clean it and get it back to a more manageable level. So that's one prime example of something I intend to change when I go home because I do know that my physical space at home really affects my mindset and my mood and when I wake up in a clean, serene, clutter-free area, it sets me up for a better day. So I'll just ask you the question, is there anything you have right now in your life that is a small problem that you feel you could manage before it becomes a bigger one? something to consider thanks again so much so much for watching this video if you're not aware i do have video diaries from every day during my camino portuguese and in the description notes of those videos i also have 
a link to a relive video and that's a video from that day's hike which is a gps map embedded with photos into a video that the relive app creates so if you're interested check those out if you're enjoying these videos consider liking and or subscribing and take care be well